we had, our kids were grown here, we had five children, four daughters and a son. We, having lost all our families in Europe, our big thing was to have a lot of children and make sure we created a family, meaning a group of people who, different in character, different in looks, different in attitudes, were a group of people. They stick to, it, to, to each other, they help each other. We have nobody else. There are no aunts and uncles and stuff on our side anymore. They never was, they never were here. So that is one big, big advantage that I think, you know, and I mean, I have to take some credit there, which we, we achieved. Our kids are very friendly. They are of totally different. The grandchildren that came out of the five, there's nine of them. The oldest one has two babies, so we are grand, great grandparents. There are two, two and a half and four and a half. And of course, the, you know, the joy of everybody. At this point in the history, people get older than they did before. So somebody has, his grandchildren was already an old person. Great grandchildren was something to, very unusual. Well, now I'm in this unusual situation, you know, it's, it's interesting, it's, I love them, they're cute and they're nice and everything, you know, but it's, it's a sign of age. I've never seen a young great-grandfather. <laughs> I think that's, that's inherent to the title, you know. Our oldest daughter unfortunately passed away last year, Pat, and I mean that's a huge big pain, huge big pain. Last I saw her, she was in, in a bed, peacefully asleep, which is the only thing that makes me feel a little better if there is such a thing. She did not know she was dying. She had had a uh, doctor's information that she'd have about a year to live, but she did not tell us that, of course. But she had no clue, nor did the doctors, that she would basically die within two weeks. To lose a child is a pain that is very, very particular. It's, it's almost like somebody is ripping her out of my body for the second time. Only that I don't have a baby to take care of, I just have the pain of having lost her. So it's tough, but I'll just get my strength, I hope, together and, and, and do what I can as long as I'm around. And when my daughter died of breast cancer, my number two daughter, Danny, has breast cancer, I have ovarian. But I have been hanging in there. In fact, the doctor had given me three years, three good years, and then we were going to see. It's been four. And I'm still not only around, but I'm in good shape. The cancer has not come back yet. It will, she says, the doctor. But as long as I'm fine, I'm fine. I, I don't dwell on it much. I don't think of it much. I have a very active life. I do all the stuff that I always wanted to do. And just hoping, you know, that, that I'll be around a few more years. And that is all I can say. I am not the type of person who dwells on what could be or should be or when it would be because it would just make me unhappy, waste my time, 
spend, misspend my time with my kids and my grandkids and just constantly moan and groan, which I'm a bitch, but I don't moan and groan. So that's about it. I, I feel fine right now. My latest achievement was I wrote a book and now I can go home and die. I'm not, <laughs> I have no intention of dying, but I'm, I did what I had to do in my life. But yes, I wrote a book two years ago, you know, and that has been accepted. So all in all, with all the stuff that, that happened to us, we did pretty well. And my big message in the book is exactly that, that even if one goes through bad times, if you have a will to live and a, a desire to excel and some determination and some good luck, you can make it. I mean, and that was the message. The book is called Conversations with My Grandchildren. And that was basically the message I wanted to leave for them. That no matter what, one can make it if one really applies himself and has some good attitude and some, you know, I mean, you have to have a little guts. That's the story of, that's the glory of love. 